you know, I, for a long time I've been looking for a yew tree that's burying, so I can show you the difference between yew and hemlock. And um, we finally found one here. We, Jeff, we planted six yews on the property, but they're tiny little. And so this one most likely could be up to 100, 150 years old, even though it's really tiny. So um, here we have it. It looks so much like a hemlock, but the things that might set it apart, the biggest thing, are these red berries. Uh, so this is kind of where they got taxol, which was a, now thank goodness their laboratory synthesizing taxol instead of uh, from the bark of this poor tree, which has been over harvested and endangered. But see that beautiful red berry? And there's a few of them on this tree. Um, see those shiny leaves and this very lime green um, extension here? And also, the needles are opposite of each other, most of them. And then there'll be, there'll be like several that are opposite and then a few that, that are just kind of stragglers on one side. It's a very flat leaf, but that's very similar to hemlock. Um, and it doesn't have that white part that's underneath that hemlock has. Here, I'm gonna, I'll grab a hemlock. There's some hemlock right at our toes here. Let's see if you can, so, this, so those are all the things that set it apart from hemlock. Let me just see if this is hemlock here. Okay, it is. Thank goodness. Uh, see this hemlock here? See it has, has, has white underneath. See how the needles are not opposite. They're sort of totally irregular. And this is primarily a hemlock forest. So this is a baby hemlock here amidst all this. You guys know what it is. Oregon grapefruit. So Brighton Bush, we're in Oregon. Look at all these wild rhododendrons. This is the most amazing forest because it hasn't been logged in a really, really long time. We were standing next to a grand fir um, and like I say, this very old yew, which somehow survived getting um, chopped down and made into taxol in the 70s and 80s when people were harvesting yew all the time. I think there was even a forest United States Forest Service policy to cut this plant down. Um, there's all kinds of stories about yew. Yew is a very strong wood. They used it, the Native Americans, for halibut hooks. I, apparently, I didn't know this, but a halibut's a really, really, really big fish. And this was used for a halibut hook. It was, the wood is so strong, it's like metal. And when the loggers talked about when they used to log the area originally, the yew, the yew trees, would ricochet even the biggest trees. So basically the tree would land on top of this yew and it would ricochet up and unfortunately kill loggers, the early loggers that were there. So they weren't a big fan of this plant. But I wanted to talk about yew. I don't use it as medicine and a lot of really experienced herbalists don't even use it as medicine. Even though, of course, it was used by native peoples to treat different types of cancers. Um, they obviously knew what they were doing for centuries on end. I would be careful with this. If we ate this berry right here, we'd get really, really sick and maybe even die. So this is not a tree to be just kind of thrown in some tea. <laughs> um, it's a very, and I haven't used it yet at all on the animals. I do know of some naturopaths using it to treat some different types of cancer, but I don't even think it works that well for different kinds of cancer. Really, it's been used a lot for breast cancer. And, but what's so cool about this yew is, look at all the lungwort that's on it. So lungwort is a, is a uh, lichen, and it's actually got a couple different types of lichen. I think it's got, I think this is usnea on it. Uh, I'd have to check. Let's see if this is usnea. So yew, because it's so old, it will grow all these other things on it. Can't really tell if that's if that's usney, I don't think it is. But this is definitely lungwort here. Um, so lungwort looks just like lung. And um, there's this whole thing where the squirrels will eat, the, the flying squirrels will eat the lungwort. Oh, here's some, here's some fresher lungwort on that stump over there. Um, and the flying squirrels will eat this and they will, and so flying squirrel feces is, a, I think, a Chinese herb to treat the lung. And I think it comes from eating this lungwort. So lichens can be very powerful medicine and lungwort has been used a long time for bronchitis, for respiratory issues. Um, so with the yew, I'm, you know, I may experiment a little bit more with 
people that I know, <laughs> friends that I know, um, to treat people uh, with this, but I haven't had that experience. What I guess what I want to talk about you with is that this is what happens. This is such an endangered plant. It was all over Washington, all over Oregon, totally endangered, and that's because it was wild harvested. It was cut down, people were paid to get rid of it, um, and yet it takes forever for it to grow. It grows really, really slow. So this is an introduction to the yew tree. Um, lovely plant for the whole Pacific Northwest. Um, let's see, I also want to look here on the ground for another really important plant that I do use a lot. And maybe we can kind of spin us around over here, Jeff. Um, right where, it's so cool, look at this Oregon grape root growing out of this tree stump. I mean, not stump. Sorry, you're not a stump. You're just a beautiful tree. Look at all this Urva Ursi. This is all Urva Ursi. Um, it is a tannin-rich uh, herb that is used to treat bladder infections. Now, if you use too many tannins on the bladder, it will get inflamed. So, you know, the kidney and bladder is very sensitive to tannin overuse. But see those shiny, see that shiny coat? It's just kind of like the Oregon grape root or even the yew. Whenever you see the these, these shininess, you think essential oils, volatile oils, essential oils. So this um, has been brewed for a long time in tea to treat bladder infections as a urinary antiseptic, urinary antiseptic. And maybe actually it would be used very well with Oregon grape root, or I guess golden seal would be a better one, but um, as a berberine antibiotic rich, and then this Urva Ursi would direct the Oregon grape root to um, the bladder. So that would be even really very incredible. And then you see some lungwort in here, and um, it's just a forest full of medicine. It's a forest full of medicine. Um, and here at Brighton Bush at the Herbal Conference, I've also been working with using the trees, uh, we're learning how to use the trees, and so we'll probably do that as another video from home because we have so many beautiful medicinal trees at home as well. But anyway, I just want to introduce you to the beautiful you, and, um, and we'll probably head back to Brighton Bush in a few minutes and see what we can do at the Herbal Conference. Thanks, guys!